Katie Kempner, and welcome to Perspectives here at the Ipsos Girls Lounge at the Cannes Lions Festival. Right now, I am really excited to be talking to my friend, the CEO of Cole McBoy, Christine Fritti. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, Katie. Thrilled Christine, to be here. A repeat guest. I should. Uh, I should. Just every time, I'm going to be like, please you come know, back and talk with me again. I enjoy <laughs> it. I really, really do. And I love your green screen here, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful backdrop. <laughs> Fabulous we try. Background. You don't mind wearing the glasses no, inside, do no. you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here. This is not a green screen. It's beautiful. We're in Cannes. We're at the Lions yes. Festival. There are so many conversations going on, which is terrific about women and why aren't there more, more women in advertising and how do we get more women to the top? And, you know, do you think that all these conversations that are happening, because they've been going on for a while now, are they doing any good and are they the right conversations? I think they are. And it's funny because everyone goes, are we still talking about this? Why in this day and age are we still looking for the where are the women? Yeah. But until you have the conversations and raise awareness across genders, um, I think people fall into their own patterns and they forget. And what I've appreciated about the conversations is the conversations continue to evolve, whether it would be Lean In or the 3% Conference, or um, there was an op-ed recently in the New York Times that talked about it's not about the glass ceiling anymore, it's about the floor that's collapsing underneath them. So how do we as women, if we want want to affect change, really pr provide that foundation and that support for other women. And part of that is talking about it and educating our peers in the industry about the challenges that we experience and the joys that we experience and how we can encourage more people to thrive and more women to thrive. Because I think so often women are like, oh, it has to be perfect, it has to be this way, um, or I have to have everything figured out. And the more that we can share our stories, and they can go, okay, I can believe that. All right, yeah. so you don't have to have all of these things perfectly um, laid out. Experience life, but also support each other really makes a difference. And I think the culture and work environment that you're in as well plays a huge role in that. Well, let's talk about that because, you know, as the CEO of an advertising agency, you're able to, to shape in many ways the, the culture of of your of your firm what are some of the things that you've done at Cole McVoy that sort of make it easier to be a woman and have a life and rise through the ranks there I feel really honored and gifted to have the opportunity to influence our culture I've always valued being in great cultures but until I was actually a CEO I didn't understand how empowering that is a lot of times um, We've been able to recruit a lot of women. I don't know how conscious that was because I want to recruit the best talent, as does MDC, right? Yes. We're part of that family. Um, but creating an environment where people can do their best, mm -hmm. women and men, has really been um, a concerted effort, not only on my part, but our whole leadership at the organization. We just found out that for the fourth year in the row, we've been named a best place to work, the fourth best to best place to work in the state of Minnesota. Wow, um, congratulations. All, thank you very much. Outside Magazine has recognized um, our work environment and so has Ad Age. So it's something that's near and dear that really helps with recruiting and retention. But we have a program that we launched about a year and a half ago called FIRE. And this is a particular group to support um, primarily women, but we have men that are participating. So mm -hmm. think of the Lean In Circles. I'm a Lean In Circle champion. So we have our Lean In Circles, but we also wanted to make it more personal to Call McVoy. And um, the groups that meet once a month, and there's about six of them, that really talk about issues that are relevant to them. And one big aha um, during this evolution of this group uh, was so often you want to hear from the people that have made it. Um, and we think that the people that have made it have all the answers, which isn't true. It's, you can learn from their journey, um, but what's even equally as powerful is learning from each other and your peers. Mm -hmm. So we've had this whole new um, energy and really ideal pool that has been generated from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So it's account executives who are 25 talking to account executives who are 25 and 26 and getting um, great, great knowledge and great um, support. They get it from a to on top, but I think sometimes as women, you don't always feel it around you from your peer set because oftentimes you know you're all trying to buy for a few positions um, where we should be supporting everybody um, yeah. for forward advancement. Being in Minnesota, there's a lot of unique uh, weather opportunities. I wish there were more <laughs> like this. Unique um, weather opportunities. <laughs> unique weather opportunities, but we have a culture that really empowers great ideas. So when we had our 
schools closed in January for the fifth time. I think a lot of parents, again, women and men, went, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? i got to scramble again. And just the stress level you could feel within the organization. And Jennifer Stack, who uh, is one of our fabulous employees, and I know you know Jen, said, well, what if we did like Polar Vortex Day? What if we like take the cafe, tell everyone they can bring their kids to work, and then we will structure a program that basically allows them to enjoy arts and crafts and education and fun while their parents work? And I said, that's yeah. a brilliant idea. She's like, Really, we can do it? I see, yeah, go make it happen. So again, empowering people to just make those little things um, activate to decrease the stress for women, but also yeah. just for parents in general has made a huge, huge difference. Well, first of all, the whole premise of this show is that we talk to people that have made it and, <laughs> you know, to, to give inspiration. But but I think you're right. And, I, and you know, women talking to each other, everybody talking to each right. other, but, you know, I'm a little more focused on, on women's issues and women talking to each other that are sort of at the same level and saying like this is how I do this this is how I do that but do you think that there is among women the worry that you know if I admit these are the challenges I face maybe I won't get that promotion and it's better for me just not to say yeah I think you need to have a culture that um promotes and fosters openness and transparency mm -hmm. I think what um women have really appreciated is like oh you're experiencing the same thing I'm experiencing. So the culture that we have at Calm McVoy is one that's nurturing, supportive, demanding, yes, because everyone wants to do their best work. Yeah. But I think sometimes people are surprised that, Katie, I had no idea that you were feeling that way as well. Right. So then it builds confidence and there's not as much of a barrier. In other organizations, you're not gonna have the same culture and yeah. you probably can't have those conversations. Um, but we've had a lot of people from global agencies join our agency because there's just a different level of transparency and honesty there that allows them to be their best. And I think it's hugely important for women like us um, to be part of that change, to continue yeah. to have those conversations and to create cultures that allow not only women, but a lot of employees just to thrive in their own way, whether that's flexible hours, whether that's um, providing massage relief, which again, there's a lot of little amenities um, that really decrease the stress, but also build confidence in your employees, yeah. which we value. Mm, I like that idea of a Friday <laughs> massage. Yes. So <laughs> I was thinking after Ken, that's what I need. Come, come nice to Minneapolis. Massage. You have an open invitation. Summer is <laughs> beautiful you. there. Actually, it does look like this during the summer. Okay, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, talking about honesty and transparency, but switching gears in a different way. I'm very interested. I mean, you, you, you're incredibly intelligent. You've risen to this great role. You've had a super career. You're absolutely beautiful. You're in terrific shape. Do you think being a... Can I tape this and play this in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> you're fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Do, but do you think that being a beautiful woman has at times overshadowed how smart you are and it's hindered you? Or do you think that it's actually helped you? It's a very interesting question. I think early on in my career, I didn't really pay attention to it. When I started in the advertising business, uh, our CEO was a woman. We had multiple creative directors that were women, lots of women in, in senior leadership. And it wasn't about what they looked like, it was about their command and what they did. So I never really considered my appearance. Obviously, you want to look professional. Um, but as I migrated through the industry, yes, it was a differentiator. Um, and usually a negative one. I mean, we're both blondes, you know, there's stereotypes that we're trying to break, um, you know, through the Getty Image program and, and many other progressive um, advertising commercial that change the dynamic mm -hmm. of what people see as successful or smart individuals. But I think when I realized people went, oh, you know, oh, that's just, that's just Christine, you know, isn't she cute? I thought, you know what, I can either be angry about that or just go, well, you know, that's their bias, that's their ignorance. Right. And I would use that to my advantage and go, okay, they're obviously underestimating that I, I really know and have a command of the industry and can do, can do a good job. So then I would constantly just surprise them. But I can't control perceptions or what they think. What I can control is um, how I feel about myself and being true to um, the direction of life I want to lead. And I've been thinking a lot about image, you know, as I was packing for Cannes and talking to a bunch of different women that are coming here. And, you know, it's a little bit different here because I guess people sort of let their hair down, so to speak, and are a little more free with their, with their wardrobes. But really, I mean, the image that you portray in the office, how you dress, how you are, how you present yourself, you know, it, 
it really does make a difference, doesn't it, in a different way than with men. It does, and I've had a lot of conversations with women who I value. I said, I want your voice to be heard. I don't want them to be distracted by your presence. I mean, you should come off as strong, yeah. but don't wear a short, short skirt, even though we have short, short skirts on right well, now. We can. <laughs> We've already established this is like, But it's, it's, it's knowing your environment, respecting yeah. your environment, and, and dressing for that environment because not everyone is as enlightened as yeah. we'd like them to be. You know, I think that too, we have a very liberal dress code, you know, at CPB in our Miami office, and I think probably all of our offices. And there's been people, women, you know, that I've somewhat mentored over the years and just said, you know, like, just because you can wear that to work, you probably shouldn't. Right. It's your choice, but you're not presenting yourself the way that you think you are, you know. Here's a great idea, try it out. So spring came in Minnesota and people start taking off all the clothes. We had a fashion show. So we meet as an organization in a community every other Monday for our Monday meetups. So we had the do's and the don'ts and it was hysterical. Really? Um, so we had, you know, this big beer belly gentleman with this midriff exposure. We're like, you know, we really don't think that's appropriate. And the short shorts and, um, but in a fun way, reminding people what is appropriate. Yeah. Um, but again, you, you have to be you. There has to be some self-expression in that as well. But you want to be taken, I think, seriously. And you just have to be aware of the biases that are out there. And on that note, you know, and I've asked you this before, but I just want to ask you now, here today, you know, if you have one piece of advice to share with the women here at Cannes that have, has helped guide you through your life, what would it be? Be true to yourself and follow your dreams. You can do it. Don't let other people's perceptions or what you think they think of you get in the way of pursuing what you really want. Terrific. Thank you so much, Christine. Always a pleasure, dear. Great it's to see you. Always a pleasure.